morning and welcome to Rise Community Church Online. Uh, I'm Pastor Pete and we're happy that you're here joining us today. Uh, let's go ahead and prepare our hearts and, and bow our heads in prayer. Father, Lord, we come before you. We thank you, Father, for all the good work that you're doing in us, Lord. We pray that this season and this time, Lord, will not be wasted, but that we will drive our hearts closer to you and focus all our lives upon you. We pray for your intervention uh, in our lives and in this world, in this community, Lord. We pray, Father, that we will hear your Holy Spirit and be your hands and feet. Uh, we love you. Uh, and, and Father, with all our hearts, as sincere as we can, we, we desire to worship you. And we ask this in your holy name. Amen. So join us now as we worship in song. that you just come into our lives right now, Lord. 
And in the midst of all this craziness, in the midst of this seclusion and this isolation, Father God, I pray that we cling even closer to you, Lord Jesus. I pray that we seek you out, Father God. And Lord, that in the midst of this isolation, we still don't stop seeking your opportunity, Lord God. That we continue to seek to be used as your vessel, Father Lord. And I pray that we be encouraged, Lord Father, because you are in control. And we thank you, Lord, for this morning and for this time of worship. to your side so heaven is real and death is a lie I want to hear dry bones living again singing as one
never been a moment you were forgotten you are not hopeless do you have been broken your innocence stolen I hear you whisper underneath your breath I hear
send out an army to find you in the middle of the darkest night. It's true, I will rescue you. I will never stop marching to reach you in the middle of the hardest fight it's true i will rescue you what about you much. You love her so much? <laughs> yeah. Why do you love her so much? Because! Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day, Mommy. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day, Day. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day Titi. I love you so much. Thank you for always folding my clothes. Mwah. Happy Mother's Day, Sister Mom. Thank you for being there in every season and for bringing so much love and joy into our family. And happy Mother's Day to all the moms out there and all the people acting as moms. We love and appreciate you. And what's your favorite thing about your mom? Um, she makes us food so I can eat and she buys us things. Say, Amo, I love you and I wanted to say thank you. Okay, uh, hello, Mom. Uh, I just want to say that you're very kind and you're very nice and I love you so, so, so much. So much that you don't even know how much I love you. What do you like the most about your mom? She's really funny and she got me into watching Prison Break. <laughs> <laughs> you are a perfect mom to me and you are a beautiful woman just all in all and you inspire me every day to clean my room and to uh, just be nicer to the world. What do you tell mommy? What do you tell her every day? I love her and she's so pretty and she's beautiful. <laughs> Hi, good morning Rice Community Church. My name is Gabriel. And I'm Cynthia. Hey, welcome to Rice Community Church. Stay connected with all of our online groups. You can find them on our website at risecommunity.org or download our app and everything is there that you need. We now have our first announcement, which is about our prayer meetings every single night at 7.30. They're great, and we just added a brand new prayer room on our website and on the app. Make sure you join us for those, and also make sure every Wednesday night at 8 p.m., join Pastor Pete as he takes a deeper dive in our Acts studies. Also, we have this Wednesday, 7 to 9 p.m., uh, another Rise Youth Game Night on our Zoom channel. Mm -hmm. So make sure you check out the the app and also your emails and text messages will be sending out the links for you. And now parents, why don't you go ahead and pull out your electronics, log on to Rise Kids Experience and get them set up. And without further ado, here's Brendan. Bye. <laughs> hey everyone, happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there. I just wanna take a moment before we start and say thank you. Thank you for all of your unselfish, selfless love that you show daily um, to all of us. We've all been impacted by your selfless love and it's such a great representation of the love of God. So thank you to all your mothers out there. Today we're going to continue our study in um, Acts. We're in our week four of our study in Acts and I've been really, really excited about this study ever since Pastor Pete told us we would be doing this study last year, um, I just got really excited. And it's probably because, you know, I really love the church. I believe in its purpose to bring the kingdom of God to the earth. And as someone who's grown up in church my whole life, I've, I've seen the good, the bad, and the ugly, and I've been disillusioned a little bit. And I've, I've witnessed really amazing things in the church, and I've witnessed some heartbreaking things in the church. But, you know, the church isn't perfect because we're not perfect. And, you know, every time I want to kind of run away or give up on the church, which happens more than you might think, I find myself right back here because I believe God's given me a mission, a purpose, a passion to see the church fulfill its calling 
and who it's supposed to be. And that, that calling for me becomes more and more clear every day. And today, I believe God's given me a word for our church, and I'm really excited to share with you um, what God's put on my heart, because it really just kind of builds upon what Pastor Pete has been speaking on already and what Chopper spoke on last week. And, you know, we've spent the last few weeks uh, in our study of Acts, and we're studying and we're learning about the birth of the Christian church. Now, this was a really amazing time, I think, and it's something that, like, when I think about a time when I'd like to go back to, it's probably this time, because I would really love to be able to experience what it was like to be one of the first kind of Christians uh, pioneering, pioneering the way and, and experiencing the things that uh, the people and the Christians in, in Acts experienced. And, you know, there's some parts of the story that are just meant for that time, but we can't just dismiss everything as just a good history lesson because the church really sets the stage and shows us the purpose of the church for today. And today we're going to read about a miracle in Acts chapter 3. Um, but before I go into that, I really want to um, reflect a little bit um, and go back just a little bit because it's important for us to recognize that the things that we see in this chapter in um, Acts, Acts chapter 4, I'm sorry, is actually where we're going to be. And the things we see in Acts chapter 4 are direct results of what we see in Acts chapter 1 through 3. Now remember, the first disciples, the first Christians, they had to discover something, something that really shaped them, and it was that the, the kingdom of God wasn't going to be what they expected. You know, because they were Jewish people who grew up learning the Jewish law, reading the Old Testament, and, and being kind of passed down traditions and expectations of what the kingdom of God was going to be like, and what the Messiah was going to be like, what he was going to look like, and what he was going to do. And they had built all these expectations, and then Jesus comes, and he kind of uh, demolishes all those expectations, and he turns things upside down, and he makes them realize that the kingdom of God isn't something that is going to be uh, built as a structure here on earth, but that the kingdom of God is within you, and the kingdom of God is within us today. And God's kingdom, it, it's an upside down kingdom. It always goes against the grain. It always um, kind of surprises us. And I think the minute we think that we figured it out, and at least for me, anytime I feel like I figured it all out, God comes in and he, turned things, he, he turns things upside down to show us that he is in control and that no amount of programs or buildings or planning or money can control him. You know, right now, everything seems kind of a little upside down. We, we're living in a really crazy time when our, our lives are just, they've been flipped upside down. Our, our work, the way we do church, uh, the way we are with our family and our friends, everything is so, uh, so different. And, and uh, in our home, it's affected us so much where, you know, my, my office, my desk right now is in my kitchen, in my dining room. And that has its own challenges because I'm sure you can relate, your kitchen is like the busiest place in the house. So when I'm on conference calls or Zoom calls, it can be quite challenging when I have the uh, kids running around screaming and getting snacks 5,000 times a day. So we have our challenges there. And, and then on top of that, also trying to be my kids' teachers. Uh, I never liked school, so being a teacher is not the best calling for me. Um, so it's affected us. And just like I'm sure it's affected all of you guys, the way we live every day, but, you know, I've realized that living in this time, kind of like upside down world, it's not always a bad thing. You know, as horrible and tragic as it is, the lives that have been lost, we can look at the situation. And at least for me, I've learned that I can see things at a different, with a different perspective. I start seeing things um, differently in, an, in a new light. And I think that sometimes that's exactly what we need. We need that intervention to shake us out of our complacency. And for me, I have to admit, God has been convicting me because I've been complacent. I, God has been showing me the areas of my life where I've been complacent. And, and I believe, just like Pastor Pete mentioned a few weeks ago, I believe the church has been complacent as well. Yes, our church and the church as a whole. One of the, my favorite lines, uh, quotes from Pastor Pete, I think, from to date, is one from a few weeks ago that when he said, the church is impotent. And I think that's such a powerful statement and I believe, I believe it's true, and I believe that's why this moment and this time, we are here for a reason. 
that we are here studying this study in Acts in our homes, watching on TV or watching on our devices. We're separated. Things are different, but we're studying this for a reason. And, and we didn't plan this. We didn't know that we were going to be studying Acts like this, but I believe God has a purpose and a plan for everything. And I believe that he can bring beauty from ashes. And I believe if we lean on him and we pursue him in this time, that he's going to show us something amazing. And I'm just, I'm really excited to see what God's going to do through this time because I believe we will come out of this and we will rise a new church and a new people ready to spread the light and the love of Christ to the world. So I believe, you know, this complacency, it's made us, I want to explain that a little bit because we've become a little too comfortable. You know, we are, we're too comfortable with coming to church on a Sunday, spending a couple hours, we listen to a couple songs, and we listen to a 45-minute message, and then we go along with our day and we check off the box because it makes us feel good, and it makes us feel holy. See, we've lost, I believe, the power of the Acts Church because let's be honest, we don't really believe that it's for us today because if we really believed in the power that we see in the book of Acts, we would see that today in our church and in churches across our country but I believe the church has lost its power. But I do believe, and this is partly what God has showed me, is I believe in this moment we are given an opportunity, just like a sleeping giant, that I believe the church will rise again from these ashes. And today I want to speak that over our church as we study, and I want to speak that over all the churches in our community and our nation. And I have to say that's what keeps me here. That's what keeps me going, is that belief and that hope that we will rise and we will become the church that God has called us to be. See, because I believe God is beginning to shake the very foundations. God is beginning to shake things around us, and the dead bones are beginning to rise. Dead bones that have been dried up for generations are beginning to rise, just like Pastor Chopper mentioned last week when he uh, brought up Ezekiel chapter 37, the prophetic message of Ezekiel. I want to I talk about that a little bit more today before we go into our Acts study, because there's something really important I believe God is trying to speak to us through this message. And the, the prophecy from Ezekiel, it was fulfilled through Jesus in the establishment of his kingdom on earth through the church. So this prophecy was fulfilled through Jesus, and I believe it's a, it's a prophetic word that still applies for us today. Here it says in Ezekiel 37, uh, Ezekiel speaking to a valley of bones. And I just want you to kind of paint that picture today. Picture a valley filled with bones scattered, scattered across this valley. And remember when we study the, the word valley in throughout the Bible, it means a time of suffering, a, a pain, a, a season of suffering. And in this time when Ezekiel, this was hundreds of years before Jesus, he was writing this prophetic message that God gave him was for the Jewish people who were in Babylonian exile. So God was giving the people of Israel hope, hope for the future that he would one day unite them as one body and bring them back to the promised land. And they would become this body. And, and, and we read here, he tells Ezekiel to begin to speak a prophetic message over the bones. He says, dry bones, listen to the word of the Lord. This is what the sovereign Lord says, look, I'm going to put breath into you and make you live again. Then suddenly, as Ezekiel was speaking, it says, There was a rattling noise all across the valley. The bones of each body came together and attached themselves as complete skeletons. Then God told Ezekiel to speak a prophetic message to the wind, saying, This is what the Sovereign Lord says, O come, O breath from the four winds, breathe into these dead bodies so they may live again. So I spoke the message as he commanded me, and breath came into their bodies. They all came to life and stood up on their feet, a great army. And I believe this message is alive for us today, that it continues, and it's a prophetic message that we can claim today as well. Because as we feel scattered right now, you know, the church feels scattered. Literally, we're scattered into our homes, we're separated. But, you know, this has been happening for years, decades even, where we've lost the power of the Holy Spirit in, in, to, in the modern church of today, I believe. And, and we're like these dead bones scattered across the valley. But I believe God is calling his church to rise again. 
like an army of dry bones, breathless for generations. He's calling us to rise so that we can breathe. He can breathe life into us again and bring life to the world. So I want you to notice something here, though. The, the dry bones, these bones, they're scattered, right? So I think it's interesting when we talk about unity. A couple weeks ago, Pastor, Pastor uh, Pete talked about unity. Each piece of the body of Christ has to come together in unity before the breath of God can fill them. In 1 Corinthians, it teaches that about the spiritual gifts and how all the gifts of the Spirit come together to form one unified functional body of Christ. And this is such a great picture, you know, and, and we talk about it a lot, how the, the body of Christ, you know, and have you ever wondered where that came from? It, it comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 12, where it says, the human body has many parts, but the many parts make up one whole body. So it is with the body of Christ. I encourage you to go and read that full chapter, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, because it really expresses the importance of the unity in the body of Christ. It expresses that we all need each other. Each part is important and significant in its own way, and we can't try to move forward without each other. It would be like saying to your foot, I don't need you, I don't like you, so I'm going to cut you off. Or to your hand, you said, you know, I don't think that I need you, so I'm going to cut you off. It, it, it's ridiculous. It doesn't make sense. But isn't that what we do? As soon as someone says something we don't agree with or someone rubs us the wrong way, we cut them off. But we don't realize that we're cutting off our own hand. We're cutting off our own foot. We're cutting off important members of the body of Christ. Because, you know, the body of Christ, the community of the Christian church, it's not supposed to be this holy group of people that you agree with all the time. It's not supposed to be people who look just like you. It's supposed to be people who you wouldn't normally hang out with. Because iron sharpens iron. And I believe the true body of Christ, the true church, looks a lot more like like Jesus and his disciples, they wouldn't have probably hung out together and been close friends if it wasn't for Jesus. They were totally different people from different walks of life, and they had their disagreements. So I just want to encourage you, if you feel like, um, if you're struggling and feeling like, like you're not getting along or that someone's rubbing you the wrong way, just be encouraged and know that you're in the right place. Because we need each other, and we need every part of the body of Christ to function the way God intended it to function. And this is what we see in the Church of Acts, right? They were one body, and this is the most beautiful picture that we see. And I think this is what attracts us to the Acts Church, is because of the unity that we see. And that they, they recognize that each part is important and significant. And, and what we're going to see today in Acts chapter 4 is the byproduct of that unity and that filling of the Holy Spirit, because that's when amazing things start happening. That's when miracles start happening. So today we're going to begin a new section um, of Acts where Luke describes um, the tale of two temples. And there's three main points I'm going to uh, go over today, I want to make today in today's scripture. So I want you to go ahead and turn your Bibles to um, Acts. We're going to be looking in... Chapter 3. So Acts chapter 3, it, it's the story of Peter and John. They're going to the temple. And they're going to the temple for a, a daily prayer. And on their way there, they see a lame man uh, sitting at the temple gate. And this lame man uh, calls out to them and asks them for money. And in verse 4, we're going to pick it up. John looked at him intently, and, and Peter said, Look at us. The lame man looked at them eagerly, expecting some money. But Peter said, I don't have any silver or gold for you, but I'll give you what I have. In the name of Jesus Christ the Nazarene, get up and walk. Then Peter took the lame man by the right hand and helped him up. And as he did, the man's feet and ankles were instantly healed and strengthened. He jumped up, stood on his feet, and began to walk. Then walking, leaping, and praising God, he went into the temple with them. Now, just reading that, that's an amazing story, right? This miracle happens. This lame man who we can only imagine is, was probably like this his whole life was healed and could now walk. And, you know, we can stop right there at that miraculous sign. And, but I believe there's more to this story than just that miracle. See, because 
You have to understand that this man in this society had zero value. He was worth nothing. He was no one. He had no one. No one paid attention to him, and he was where he was because that was the best place he could be to get any type of help. But he'd become white noise in the background of everyone's daily life. And, you know, something that I've learned through this pandemic as well is it's really silenced that white noise. You know, during the first week or so, we would go for walks, and one of the first things I noticed was how quiet it was. There were less planes flying over, less cars driving by, and suddenly you could hear things that you didn't hear before. You could hear, you know, the birds chirping. You could hear families laughing and playing together and kids, and, and it was kind of beautiful. You know, I, I really, I think that's pretty amazing, and I, I think it really opened my eyes to realize that the noise of everyday life can sometimes get in the way of beautiful things that we miss out on. And sometimes we need that intervention to see things around us. We need an intervention sometimes to awaken us, to see things that we normally wouldn't see. See, because the real miracle here is that Peter and John saw this man. Have you ever thought and wondered, how many times do you think Peter and John passed by this man? He was sitting at the temple gate every day. And we know that the disciples went to the temple daily for prayer. We just read that a couple chapters ago. How many times do you think that they passed by this man? But today they saw him. They had been filled with the Holy Spirit. And that brings me to my first point, that the Holy Spirit opens our eyes to see the world through the eyes of Jesus. He opens our eyes to see things that we normally would ignore because we're so caught up in our own lives, in building our own kingdoms. But when the Holy Spirit fills us, He gives us, He convicts us, and allows us to lay down our kingdom and pursue God's kingdom. And it's almost like putting on a lens and we're able to see the world now through the eyes of Jesus. And it opens our eyes to see amazing things. You know, there's a story in Luke, the end of Luke, where it, it talks about these two um, followers of Christ. It was after the resurrection um, of Jesus. And um, these two follow, followers of Christ were heading back home. to the, It was on the road to Emmaus. And they were heartbroken because they believed that Jesus came to restore Israel, but now he was dead. So they were heartbroken and they were talking about it on their way. And then suddenly a man appears next to them walking beside them and it's Jesus, but they don't recognize him. They start talking to this man and this man starts talking to them, asking them questions and they, they have a whole conversation and they walk miles and not even knowing it's Jesus. And then they get closer to the village and they invite him in for dinner. They take a break and they invite him in, come have dinner with us. And as soon as they break the bread, Jesus breaks the bread, their eyes are opened and they, they realize who's right in front of them, who has been in front of them the whole time. See, because Jesus through the power of the Holy Spirit, will open our eyes to things that we can't see otherwise. Because we live with blinders on, and that those blinders uh, keep us from our identity and keep us from our purpose. And in this story, the miracle of this story we read in Acts, it, it begins with Peter and John seeing this man. Seeing this man the way no one else did, with value because no one else had any value for this man. He was, he, he was worthless to the society. But they were bringing God's kingdom to the, to the earth by, by seeing him first and telling him and restoring him to his value and his purpose, because in God's kingdom, no one is invisible. Every man, woman, and child has value in God's kingdom. But we have to be honest and say, do we always live like that? Do we always live that way? You know, Pastor Pete mentioned a couple weeks ago that Sundays is the most segregated day in our country because we get in our little huddles, our holy huddles with the people that look just like us and think just like us, and we think that we're being righteous. But how many invisible people are we missing? How many opportunities are we missing? Are we passing by on our way to church every day? 
It's easy to close our eyes to the world around us, ignoring the invisible man at our gate. That's why we need the filling of the Holy Spirit. We need the Holy Spirit to open our eyes to see the world through Jesus' eyes. Otherwise, we'll find ourselves fulfilling our own selfish desires. Because that's what we do. When, when we're so focused on and narrow focused on what's right in front of us in our own kingdoms, we're living selfishly because it's all about my kingdom and what I want. And I'm going to go to church today to make me feel good and check off the box. And on our way to church, we're missing all the opportunities and all the invisible people around us. But if we live with eyes wide open, filled with the Holy Spirit, imagine what your life would be like. Imagine the miracles that you could see. See, because what Luke is showing us here in this story, it's more than a miracle. It's a representation of the old temple and the new temple. See, because the lame man, he was stationed here at the temple gate for a reason. Because the temple or the church was supposed to be taking care of him. The church supposed to be taking care of this man, and they failed him. And I have to ask the question today, how many times has the church failed you? Because the church has failed me many times, because we're imperfect people. But I believe the reason the church fails us is because we operate as an old temple. I believe the modern church looks more like the old temple than it does the new. We've lost sight of who we are as the new temple filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. And we've gone back to the old ways because that's controllable. Because that's where we can put structures and plans and, and we, can, we can control it and we can form it and we can have our rules and our laws just like they did. Because they spent so much time debating on what was right and what was wrong and going through all the laws line by line by line, debating on who's in and who's out. They were missing the opportunity to take care of the most vulnerable people right in front of them. And do, don't we do that today? How many times have we missed out? Personally, how many times have you missed out? How many times have we as, as a church missed out because we're distracted by building our own kingdoms? Now, I know we've been a little rough on the church lately. The last couple of weeks, we've said some things that might have ruffled some feathers and might have made you feel a little uncomfortable. And maybe it's because we don't see you face to face, so we have a little more boldness. Um, but it's important for you to know that the pastors here at Rise, we're not here to simply play church. See, because we're tired of mediocre Christianity. We're tired of mediocre church. And we're passionate to see you fulfill your purpose and be a vital part of the body of Christ because we all need each other. We have to do this together as one body unified. And when we do that, imagine what we will see. Imagine the transformation in our homes and in our communities and in the world around us. We need each other to function in our gifts Respecting each gift because no gift has more value than the other. Serving one another in those gifts. So whether we're near or far, whether we're in person or over the internet, as we study this book, this is why this study is so powerful for us because we're being convicted. And it's starting with the pastors because I'll speak for myself, I have been convicted and I know by the conversations I've had with the other pastors, Pete and Chopper and, and Frank and some of the other pastors, that we're all feeling that same conviction. That we have not been leading by example. That we too often get distracted and try to do this in our own strength. Because that's my weakness. I try to do this in my own strength. I try so hard to make it work. Because I get a vision from God and I get a purpose and then I try to do it on my own rather than laying it down at his feet. Because I can't make it all about my kingdom. I have to surrender that daily and choose to pursue his kingdom. 
See, because we're desperate. This is why we're desperate for the Holy Spirit, because we need the Holy Spirit to guide us in every step that we take, no matter what the future holds. And right now, the future is so uncertain. We need Him more than ever. But why do we say we need Him more than ever? We need, it, we need Him the same always, but now, in this moment, we're in a valley. And that's why I believe we can find hope in a valley and, and, and understand why these things happen sometimes, because it's that intervention to shake us to shake us out of our complacency, like I said before. See, because we're not going to be another church on the block. We're not going to be another church on the block so people can just come and check off their box and make them feel holy. We have been called to something more real than that, something everlasting, something that no building can contain and no virus can stop. That's what I believe for us. And... That's why I don't want to go back to normal. You know, we, we talk about how we want things just to go back to normal. And yeah, some, some things I do want to go back to normal. I would like my house to go a little bit back to normal. My kids, they need to go back to school because if I keep teaching them, they're never going to learn anything. So yeah, some things need to go back to normal. But when it comes to church, I don't want it to go back to normal. Because I believe the church has been broken. We've been broken and scattered like those bones, but I'm here to say today that God is calling us to rise. He's calling us to stand and rise again. He's calling us into a new chapter of the story of the church. One that it looks more like the original, but it's not a sequel because we all know sequels really suck. But it builds on that, and it's something new. In Isaiah chapter 43, it says, For I'm about to do something new. See, I've already begun. Do you not see it? I will make a pathway through the wilderness. I will create rivers in the dry wasteland. God is creating a pathway for us. We are in the wilderness, but he is creating a way out. And when we are out on the other side, we will be risen as a new people and a new church. That's what I believe for us today because I don't want to be an Acts church. I want to be a Jesus church. Because we can look in, at the Church of Acts and we can try to emulate everything that they did. But really, the only thing that we should emulate is their faith, their relentless faith in Jesus and their unselfish love for one another. Because we love the idea of the Acts Church, but I don't think we realize that in order to be a truly Acts Church, we have to be selfless. And that's my second point today, is that in order to be a true Acts Church, we have to be selfless. Back in Acts chapter 2, we read that in verse 42, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. See, because I believe you can't be truly devoted to someone else and be selfish at the same time. If we're truly going to be devoted to his teachings and to one another, we can't be selfish. But selfishness is what stops the church. Throughout history, selfishness is what has stopped the church from fulfilling its true purpose to bring the kingdom of heaven to the earth. And you might say, hey, how am I selfish? I'm not a selfish person. You just offended me. Sorry. But you are. We all are. We're all selfish. And, and usually we don't see how selfish we are until we see someone truly selfless. And that's the beauty of the cross. In the Easter season that we just came out of, when we spend time to reflect on the sacrifice, the ultimate selfless sacrifice of Jesus, someone who died so that we could live. But you know, we also experience selfless acts around us every day. And today, I think it's especially appropriate to reflect on our mothers because they represent such a genuine selfless love each and every day that so many times goes unnoticed. So I, I encourage you to take a moment today and reflect on that. As you think about selflessness, think about those people in your lives who have done something selfless for you, who have given up something so that you could have something. Because selflessness inspires selflessness. And we should be inspired by the selflessness of others around us. We should be inspired by the selflessness we see in the church of Acts. Because 
they were, they were selfless. That's, that's what should inspire us. We should be inspired by their faith and devotion to God and each other. We should be inspired by their unity. Let that inspire us today. And the third point I want to make today is that this power that allowed the lame man to walk, it only came through the name of Jesus. It wasn't through Peter's strength and his knowledge. It was through his faith in Jesus. Because he says, I don't have any silver or gold for you, but I'll give you what I have in the name of Jesus Christ the Nazarene. Get up and walk. See, because Peter's faith in Jesus is what made the lame man walk and restored his value in God's kingdom. Because our faith in Jesus will bring restoration to the world. Our faith in Jesus and the filling of the Holy Spirit, that is what will transform the world around us. It's not just to show off a cool miracle. Anytime Jesus did a miracle or, you know, opened the eyes of the blind or raised the dead, there was always a deeper purpose in that. And it was to show that he's bringing order where there was no order. He's bringing purpose where there was no purpose. And that has been God's plan since the beginning of time. And now we are a part of that plan. And he's calling us to rise, to join him in that plan, to bring purpose to the world again. In Philippians chapter 2, verse 9, it says, Therefore God elevated him to the place of highest honor and gave him the name above all names, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue declare that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. See, because at the end, we know that every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. So that's why it's okay for us to stop building our own kingdoms and pursue His kingdom. Because every kingdom made by man will fall. Every kingdom made by man will fail. We've seen it throughout history. But God's kingdom is eternal and it will last forever. The old temple has been destroyed. But the new temple, those who believe in Jesus Christ and are filled with the Holy Spirit, it will live for eternity. It's a new temple that's been filled with the Holy Spirit and it will live for eternity. So why do we settle for the old temple still? We have got to lay down our pride and we got to lay down the old temple. We got to let go of the old temple and embrace the new temple, the upside down kingdom that is within you. Yeah, it might be scary because you might not understand it completely. You might not be able to wrap your head around it completely. You might not be able to um, make sense of it all and control every aspect of it. But that is the upside down kingdom that he's calling us to. That is the faith that he's calling us to. I believe today God is calling us to rise. So today I speak life to the dry bones. I speak life to the dry bones of our church. And I call you to awaken from your slumber, to unite together in faith, filled with the Holy Spirit, and pursue His kingdom because His kingdom is eternal. And if we, if we pursue His kingdom, we don't have to worry about anything else. We, it's not a waste of time. Because if we're going to do anything while we're here on earth, don't you want to spend your time building a kingdom that's going to last forever? Not one that's going to fall or fail. So today I want to pray over us. And as I close, I'm just going to pray and I, I want you just to reflect on these points today. What we've learned so far, that the unity, first we are called to unite and be, called, and, and be together as one body of Christ, what Pastor Pete taught a few weeks ago. And we're called to be filled with the Holy Spirit because when we're filled, He promises to fill us with His Spirit, the helper, the advocate, what Pastor Chopper spoke last week. 
And today, we get a glimpse of what happens when, when we do that. Our eyes are open to see the world through the eyes of Jesus. We're then given the ability to practice selflessness, something that comes unnatural to us, but with the Holy Spirit, it's very natural. And remember that the power doesn't come from yourself. It's not anything you can work up. It's through the name of Jesus. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you for our church. I thank you for Rise Community Church and, and all the people that you have brought together for such a time as this. And Lord, I pray that you would give us boldness to pursue your kingdom, that you would take away all the fear that gets in our way, everything that keeps us from pursuing your kingdom, Lord. Help us to have the courage to lay down our kingdoms. Help us to have the courage to pursue you and to trust you and have faith in you, Lord. I thank you for a fresh outpouring of your Holy Spirit in us today, Lord. And I pray today that we would claim this message, this prophetic message that you spoke thousands of years ago, that we can claim it today for our church, for this time. That the dead bones will rise and that you will breathe life in us again. I thank you, God, for what you're doing and for what you will do. I give you all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. We'll see you next time. Have a wonderful, wonderful Mother's Day. And join us this week as we discuss and dive deeper into this study on Wednesday. We'll see you soon. Thanks for joining us. And don't forget, every Wednesday night, Pastor Pete takes a deeper dive on Acts at 8 o'clock. And if you need prayer, please email us at prayer at risecommunity.org. Have a great day. Can't wait to see you next week.